Hi everybody, this is Jody Becker and I would like to invite you to attend my presentation on coffee. Coffee is very important to me. I give it credit for getting me through grad school. So a coffee bean starts off as actually a seed and when it's dried, roasted and ground, it is used to brew coffee. If the seed isn't processed, it can be planted and grow into a coffee tree. So depending on the variety, it will take approximately three to four years for the newly planted coffee trees to bear fruit like this. The fruit is called a coffee cherry and it turns a bright deep red when it's ripe and ready to be harvested. There's typically one major harvest a year, but in countries like Colombia, there can be two flowerings annually, which includes a main and a secondary crop. In most countries, the crop is picked by hand in labor intensive and difficult processes. Though in places like Brazil, the landscape is relatively flat and the coffee fields immense. So the process is done by machines. But once the coffee has been picked, the processing must begin as quickly as possible to prevent fruit spoilage. In countries where there's very little water, they use the dry method, um, where the freshly picked cherries are simply spread out on huge surfaces, or they use the wet method to remove the pulp from the cherry after harvesting the bean. If the beans have been processed by the wet method, the pulped and fermented beans must now be dried to approximately 11% moisture before they can be prepared for storage. These beans that you see here are still inside the parchment envelope or the endocarp, and they can be sun dried by spreading them on drying tables or floors where they're turned regularly, or they can be machine dried in very large tumblers. This is known as parchment coffee. And before being exported, parchment coffee has to be processed in the following manner. The hulling has to take place where machinery removes the parchment layer or the endocarp from the wet processed coffee. It has to be polished where any silver skin that remains on the beans is removed by a machine. It has to be ground and sorted. This is done by size and weight and the beans are reviewed for color flaws or other imperfections. And finally, the defective beans are removed. The milled beans are now referred to as green coffee, which they also sell in stores. Um, but these are loaded onto ships on either jute or sisal bags, loaded in shipping containers, or bulk shipped inside plastic lined containers. Coffee production for 2015-2016 was 152.7 million 60 kilogram bags. That's a lot of coffee. Coffee is then repeatedly tested for quality and taste. This process is referred to as cupping and usually takes place in a room specifically designed to facilitate the tasting process. I would like to work there. First, the taster, usually called the cupper, evaluates the beans for their overall visual quality. And then finally, they taste the coffee. So different beans and different batches are tasted daily. They're analyzed to determine their characteristics and flaws, but also for purpose of blending different beans to create a proper roast. Roasting transforms green coffee into the aromatic brown beans we purchase in our favorite stores and cafes. Most roasting ma machines maintain a temperature of about 550 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the beans reach an internal temperature of 400 degrees Fahrenheit, they begin to turn brown. And then we grind. The objective of a proper grind is to get the most flavor in a cup of coffee. How coarse or fine the coffee at ground it is depends on the brewing method. The length of time the grounds will be in contact with water determines the ideal grade of grind. Generally, the finer the grind, the more quickly the coffee should be prepared. That's why a coffee ground for an espresso machine is finer than coffee brewed for say, in a drip system like this one. So now we've explored the coffee making process from start until finish. This information was included in the NCA or the Coffee Summit and it was meant to be a training seminar and I have turned this into a podcast just for you. 
So the coffee you enjoy each day has taken a very long journey just to arrive in your cup. Thank <laughs> you.